Well, g'day guys, I'm Ryan Ingleton and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we're gonna cook for you something special. I've got my beautiful assistant with me again to help me. And last week in the comments, guys, I just wanted to say this, I cooked an Aussie damper for you, but someone in the comments wrote in there that I should also do a barbecued pulled pork with beer. So this week, my special treat to you, Larry, is exactly that. So what we've got for you today is a two kilo pork neck. Now the pork neck is the, it's probably the best part of the actual pig to use in a slow cooker. It goes really tender and you can just, you can just see that puppy that just wants to break down and be cooked in the camp oven. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get Amanda and she's gonna rub that puppy with the spices and I'm gonna to explain to you what I've actually put into our dry rub recipe. All right guys, so while Amanda is rubbing that bad bub, while Amanda is rubbing this bad boy, I'm gonna tell you what I've put in it from the ingredients in front of me here. So to start with, I had three tablespoons of the brown sugar. I had one tablespoon of normal salt, but you can use kosher salt if that's all you have available to you. I use one tablespoon of onion powder, garlic powder, garlic salt. Definitely use one tablespoon of that. And I use one tablespoon of onion salt. Now you can reduce these down and just use a teaspoon if you like. Depends on how big your pork belly is. Pork neck, sorry. So other ingredients that I used in that was one tablespoon of ground cumin. So you can either use cumin seed or whatever's easiest for you. And for a little bit of smokiness, we've added a tablespoon of paprika. So all in all guys, we've basically just made it nice and salty. Nice that dry rubbed, that's rubbed. That's stuck on it and that's rubbed. All right guys, so once all the seasoning is on your pork neck, on what your we hands. Or on your hands, you might, you wanna get that off? All right, once all the seasoning's off your hands, you're gonna to need to take your pork neck and because we're putting it in a camp oven and it's pretty late in the day, it's like four o'clock over here at the moment, this was a late meal that we've decided to cook, I'm gonna cut this into thirds and sear it individually so that it cooks quicker later on. So that's the first thing I'll do now, I'll lift that off and I'll cut that into ni three nice chunks. take these over individually now and we'll start searing them and brown them off in the camp oven. All right guys, so once your camp oven is up to temperature, I've got it going pretty hot at the moment, only because I wanna make sure that it really sears this pork. So be careful when you put it in, try not to splash yourself. And look, the seasoning will burn fast. So you don't wanna hold it on any of your, your salts or anything like that for too long, just a quick caramelization. And while I'm doing this, the winner to last week's question was how many times did I say guys making the Aussie damper? Now I never counted myself to be honest, I just threw it out there in the description. I actually didn't think that half of you would read it, but you did. And the winner to that actually goes to Mike's from Mike's RC Garage. So Mike, you're a bloody legend, mate. You're actually right. There was a lot of guests in there. I just wrote in you win, but uh, <laughs> I never, I never actually measured it myself, but you did, mate. And I, uh, I appreciate you for reading it and also guessing it. So on with this. We're actually cooking this in our social distancing as well, Mike. It's not as nice as your lake, mate. But it certainly smells good here. Now, the reason why we brown this uh, pork off is so that after it's all gone through the slow cooker here and it comes out, that caramelization of all that seasoning is what tastes the best. Everyone wants some of that. As you can see, that's that's going pretty quick at the moment. It's starting to, starting to sizzle well. Swap that piece over with this piece. All right guys, now once we've got that all caramelized, I don't know how well you can see that, but you can tell it's all starting to brown up and look fantastic. 
you've got two options now since we've got to keep the moisture in it you can either use real stock beef or you can put in a dark beer i like to use a dark ale so that's what we're gonna we're gonna do in this instance we're gonna pour that in that moisture the malt everything in there is going to help keep caramelizing wow if you could smell that that is amazing now normally since this is a five hour cook if it wasn't a five hour cook we'd be doing one beer for the the pot and one beer for me one beer for the pot and i can't last five hours so i'm just going to do one beer for the pot at the moment leave that like that go over and tend to the sauce and then we'll come back and check this each hour and show you guys all right guys, now I'm gonna to start to show you how we make our legendary marinade come sauce, come goodness. Okay, so you start off with an onion. Now to cut an onion, this is how I like to do it, use my tool differently. I start over here on the side, and I start chopping really fast. That warms me up. And then as you get to the onion, so you go through the onion on the way. So as you can see, you start chopping this side, and you work your way all the, all the way across the chopping board and you end up this side and that's left in the middle perfect for you. All right guys, now onto the sauce. So we're gonna start off with one and a half cups of ketchup. We call tomato sauce over here though. So one and a half cups. Now you want a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Doesn't matter if you muck this up anyway, guys, you can add to it, reduce it, change it as you're going along, so it makes no difference. So we'll have a we'll have four or five scoops, tablespoons of the Dijon mustard. We'll go with five. Makes no difference, as I said, guys, you can change it to taste, add more stock, whatever. One thing I do like though, I like brown sugar. A quarter of a cup of brown sugar. Put another four tablespoons in it, or you can just tip it in. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and now, two tablespoons of the old Worcestershire sauce. So, again, that's probably a little bit over. <laughs> that's probably a little bit over. But look, guys, if you don't like or you don't have the time to mix something like this, just go down to your local supermarket and buy some bloody barbecue sauce and tip that in, that'll do, and, and cut up an onion. You don't have to go to the extremes we've gone to. It's just the acidity in that apple cider will help break down that meat that little bit more. So if you can give that a whisk, Amanda, while you're here. That's it, get into it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna add this sauce, this marinade, after about two hours of cooking with the beer. But as I said, I'll check it every hour and let you know because I just want to make sure that there's still fluid in there and the meat hasn't dried out. Chop. All right, now one thing guys I can say, you've got to make sure that your assistant does all the heavy lifting. That is the best way to cook. Chuck it in. Chuck it in. That's an awesome job, Manda. Just get us another 20 more if you could. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so we're, we're about two hours, two and a half hours now into the cooking. So it's time for us to add our sauce. We'll just have a look. And that's looking, actually, it's already starting to fall apart. So that's looking, that's looking really good. So I'll tip in the onions. I'll tip in the sauce. Now you can keep half of this sauce if you like. I'll probably just keep maybe just the last little bit down there just to tip in at the end to add a little bit of moisture. We'll leave that for another couple of hours and we'll see how we go and we'll have a few more drinks. All right, so this has been on for about oh, only three hours now. It's actually gone a little bit faster than what I thought. The dog's barking too, so you just get that in the background. That's great. But we'll check this now. That is absolutely Magnificent. It's already broken down too. Uh, uh, look out, you burn your little mouth. Alright, that's, that's it guys. 
three hours in the slow cooker. I meant to take six, probably because I had it a little bit too hot. <laughs> probably I had it a little bit too hot at the start when I put the beer in, but either way, that's come up looking amazing. So what we might do is we might have a couple of extra drinks, just let it sit there and just soak up all the juices and reduce itself down, then go inside and let the boys test it. And then that's the real test really. <laughs> All right, boys, so we've done the pulled pork outside today. Mum's gonna bring it in. Two of you have normal pulled pork. Two of you opted for what, pasta salad? All right, so if you don't know what pasta salad is, guys, that's like a, it's like a ranch dressing with some cold pasta in it, if you're anywhere else in the world and you haven't had uh, pasta salad before. So we'll try one at a time and give us your honest opinion. If you think it's crap, say it's crap. If you think it's great, well, you guys are legends. What's your verdict now? It's alright. It's alright? Mm. What about yours, Riley? It's decent. Decent. Jesse? It's good. Good? It's good. All right. Apart from the onion, I think it is. No, you don't like onion, but you know what, mate? Onion yeah. makes it taste nice. So, what about you, Hunter? Yeah, it's good. It's good? Yeah. Alright, so everyone that said it was good, raise your hands. You said decent. Okay, you all get a hundred bucks. Everyone who said it was decent misses out. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. I love you, sir. <laughs>